And so there's this beautiful story and analogy that um, Chogim Trumpa talks about and that was passed on to uh, Zigger Conchal Rinpoche that then Pema Chodron has taught. And it's this analogy that, that we are all like children with a bad case of scabies, scabies itch, okay? And we're old enough to know that scratching the itch is going to make it worse, but we're not old enough to, to refrain from scratching the itch. And so we have scabies and the more that we scratch it, you know, the more we reach for the food, the more we numb out, the more we drink, the more we smoke, the more we numb out with Netflix, the more we solidify into our belief systems, the more systemic it gets, it's, it creates it a worse problem. And so before you know, we're scratching and scratching and scratching. And for anyone who has struggled with addiction, which I know quite intimately in my own life, you know that feeling, You're, it's hooked. So Shempa is the urge, it's that impulse, the, oh, I want to scratch it. And you know, when you, this analogy really helps because you can know that feeling of just sitting there, even for meditators, you know, the fly lands and you're just like, oh, I just want to get the fly off me. And you just have that urge to move or the urge to reach. It's the urge to move away from the present moment. Subtler levels, we're doing it with thinking all of the time story narratives, narratives, narratives. So we, you don't have to meditate for more than five minutes to see how much we just get on the thought train and off we go, you know, and that's a way that we move away from the present moment. And it's, and it's this way that, you know, so this, this analogy is when we're scratching, it's, it's, it's in creating some kind of immediate symptom relief we're covering over it. So it's like allowing us to, to feel that like, Oh God, this feels good to scratch, but we know it causes long-term pain. And so, and the, the real, the instruction then is, you know, the doctor shows up and says, okay, if you want to heal, this is what you need to do. You need to refrain from scratching the itch. And that means you need to learn how to sit in the middle of discomfort. And actually it gets easier over time, but we need to not scratch it to give this time to heal. And that to me in a nutshell is the fundamental way that I conceptualize how we work with addiction. And people think about addiction, I'm not just talking cocaine addiction, heroin addiction, you know, which I, I know cocaine addiction and coffee addiction and stimulant addiction and all of the things, you know, those are, are, are real deep experiences, but addiction is applicable to everyone. We're, we're all addicted to moving away from the present moment. And we're all learning now how to make peace with this sense of discomfort. And I really believe that this is what ayahuasca is teaching us how to do. And that's why and I don't know if it's just because of years of learning Tibetan Buddhism and then sitting with the medicine and having such a deeply entrenched perceptual lens. But when I sit with the medicine through deeply uncomfortable moments and there is nowhere to run, you can't move away from it. There's ways that you can see your mind moving away from it. And I see the ways that I try to move away from the present moment, but Sometimes I'll have these entire journeys, like eight hours where it's so intense. I'm like burning in the fire of just pain. And I'm just sitting there to myself saying, just stay. It's okay. Just stay. And it's like my mantra. I'm like holding it like right there. Just like, don't, don't go anywhere. Just hold it right here. Just stay. And I'll just use the word stay over. It's like training a puppy dog, you know? And so I do feel that that kind of mindfulness training, especially when we bring it into the everyday, you know, reality of our everyday lives, bringing ceremony into the fabric of our everyday lives, cultivating a meditation practice, we do learn how to actually make peace with this other teaching that I've mentioned a couple of times, which is this teaching of fundamental groundlessness that we are always looking for ground to stand on that. And, and again, it's so similar. It's the way that we reach for food. We reach for Netflix. We reach for the things that's 
us trying to reach for something solid in an impermanent reality. It's like we're, it's like, you know, the, we're just like trying to grasp onto the straws and just trying to do what we can all the time to be like, okay, it's okay in this moment. I got it. Like, it's going to be fine, you know, but actually we're just moving through life. And so it requires this whole mindset shift that instead of just constantly pushing away from this truth that causes an enormous amount of suffering, we breathe into it and we actually tap into it. And we recognize that this place that is fundamentally impermanent is the source of all of creation. It is the wellspring of energy. And we can actually align our beings with that kind of energy. This is the, the notion of flow state living, which we can't always be in all the time, but it becomes a philosophy and a way of life and a way that we can use these Dharma teachings and these teachings from our plant teachers to help us let go, to help us enjoy the beauty of the ride, that there is beauty in grief. There is beauty in the sadness of letting go of something that you love. Like, you know, I just, I, I feel it so deeply. Like when I think about like what we let go of with the center that we built, like there's beauty in that love. And that's what we're here to do is we're here to feel it all. We're here to be human. And the more that we allow ourselves to feel that, the more enjoyable the ride is and the more that we actually build bridges amongst so much division between humanity and people who are just fighting against each other right now. You know, we build bridges by feeling and connecting with other people in the way that they feel. And this is a huge portal of leadership training for our time.